Not that. Praise the Lord for all that he's done. And man, he has he blessed our church. Amen. And wow, and if you didn't enjoy that, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what to say after that. Amen. I, yeah, I don't know what to say after that, but praise the Lord. He is, he is an amazing God. Amen. Wow. All right. Today we're going to be looking at the sanctity of life. We're going to be sharing a message with you that deals with that. And normally, the sanctity of life is something that is in, uh, is in January. But due to the things that God laid on my heart and the way that we were planning and uh, working on some things with the servants and, and all that, I wanted to go ahead today and share with you the idea of sanctity of life. Because sanctity of life is an important issue. Amen? Especially in our day and time. Especially in the times that we're living, sanctity of life is something that you and I ought to really, really have on our hearts. So I want to look today in the book of Genesis chapter 1, starting at verse 27. We're only going to read verse 27. And we're going to, I want to share with you today the the verse that I think is paramount in this idea of sanctity of life. That if we can't grasp this then we have a major problem. And I believe today this is the issue that the world is dealing with as we talk about the sanctity of life. Now, I want you to understand, when we talk about sanctity of life, it it, it is a major issue toward abortion. Amen? We we believe that. We, We ought to be protecting unborn babies. I believe that with all my heart. But I don't want us to get caught up in just the idea of abortion. I want us to, to look at all the ideas of how we deal with human life, how we set life apart and, and make it special as to wh- and then to why we do that. Look in the Bible in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. Let's go ahead and stand as we read that one verse. This is our key focus verse of the day. In verse 27, it says this. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Father, we thank you for today, and we thank you for the time that we can be together here this morning. Wow, Lord, thank you for that powerful, powerful time of praise and worship that we have. And Lord, I pray today that as we continue on in this time with with the, the the message that you've laid on my heart that God today would be a day that Lord we could see lives change from what we've experienced here and God I pray that the message that I'm about to say will be your message not mine not one that I put together the words I'm going to say Lord they'll be coming out of my mouth but there will be your words and that father the response would be as you desire for it to be in Jesus name Amen. Thank you. Go ahead and be seated. Some of you may be saying, okay, now wait a minute. What does that verse, why why do you think that that verse is key to the idea and the understanding of sanctity of life? Well, the first point that I want to make and the reason I believe it is there on the board or on your screen. The sanctity of life, my friend, is an extension of the sanctity of God. What I'm saying here is that if we do not believe in the sanctity of God or setting apart God as Jehovah, then we're going to have a hard time understanding the sanctity of life, how special life is. And here is where I believe the world is is struggling with this idea and why we are, are dealing with it in the ways that we're dealing with it today. 1 Peter 3.15 says, But sanctify the Lord in your heart. So what it means is to set apart God as Jehovah, that you, when you get into your mind understanding who God is, God is the creator, God is the giver, he he gives life, he is the one who made life, he is the one that formed us, and because of that we now set him apart in our minds and our hearts, which then allows us to know that life, because he is the giver of it, is special. If we are not able to do that, my friends, then we're going to have a very difficult time in understanding the idea of sanctity of life. So what is sanctity of life? Well, sanctity of life is viewing people as special, or if you will, set apart, because we are made in the image of God. 
What I want us to understand here is that we are setting apart, that, that we are set apart as special. We, my friends, can I declare something to you? You and I are not like animals. Our lives are not like animal lives. You're in my life. We're not like plant life. We're not like any other life on this planet or in the universe. We're not like it. We are special. And the reason we're special is not because you may be like me. And as I found out a few weeks ago, people determined that I have a special personality. Yeah, yeah, I, I kind of like that myself. Although I know why they said it, I claimed it as good. But we're, we're set apart, we're, we're, we're special because we're made in the image of God. Do you understand that nothing else is made in that image? As, and, and because we are viewing it as special, then what we need to understand is the fact that life, human life, ought to be protected and respected. We're to, now listen, folks, I want you to understand something. I believe that we are to take care of the planet, amen? I believe God created this planet, and he wants us, as, as I shared a few weeks ago when, when I was talking about stewards and, and servants, I believe he gave us this planet not to use and abuse and destroy and not worry about it. I believe we're to take care of it. I believe we're the stewards of this planet, and he gave it to us to, to watch over. We have dominion over this place. So I'm not sitting here saying, well, we should just ridiculously do whatever we want. But no, we're stewards of it. But here, can I tell you this? We are not the same as the rest of this planet. We, we ought to be, we are different. That we ought to be able to defend life and to treat others that way because people should be protected and respected. I, I, it blows my mind that there are a lot of people who would rather protect unborn turtles than unborn babies. As a matter of fact, in places uh, where the sea turtles go and they, and, the, and they lay their eggs, do you know that if you were to walk on that beach, as a matter of fact, they close the beach down, don't let you walk on it, but if you were to walk on that beach and step on one of those eggs and, and, and basically kill that unborn sea turtle, you could go to jail. You could have heavy fines and go to jail, but yet here we are, we're now allowing unborn babies to be, be killed in the womb all around our nation. And now they're even extending it to, to even greater lengths and taking it deeper into to where even if it's the day of, the, of being born, you can abort that baby. And my friends, listen to me. That doesn't make sense to me. We ought to be protecting that. As a matter of fact, and I'm not getting political here because this is an absolute fact. I'm not just making something up. But this administration right now, we have put back into action the idea that we as an America can send money to around the world so that other nations can abort babies we do that now we started that back up now listen I'm not I'm not going Democrat or Republican here that's just fact amen but when we view unborn turtles better than unborn babies my friend something's terribly wrong with us and it goes back to this fact right here is that we sanctify ourselves as an extension of the sanctity of God the thing that we need to understand right here and right now is the fact that people are the crowning point of creation. We are the crowning point of creation because I want you to understand something. God spoke creation into existence. The Bible says in Genesis that God said, let there be light, and there was light. God said, let there be firmament, and there was firmament. Let there be darkness, there was... And so everything that was created, God spoke it into existence. Until it came to man. He spoke creation into existence, but the Bible says he formed man. He formed him. The Bible tells us in Genesis 2, 7, that if we were to look down there, we would see in the Lord, and the Bible says, and the Lord formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed life into his nostrils. And into his nostrils he bred, bred the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So you see the difference? He spoke everything else, but when it came to us, he formed us. He, he worked on us. He developed us. The Bible says 
that, that, that God took and, and, and he, he formed me. He knit me together in my mother's womb. He did it. Not that it was just he spoke it. He, he did it for us. He formed each one of us. So what that means is, my friends, listen to me. You, you and I are special. We're special. Not because of us, but because of the one who created us. Our lives are special. And because of that, we ought to be protecting each other. We ought to be holding up each other. And the point with that is, is where there is, where there is no sanctity of God, there cannot be sanctity of life. Because you know why? It all is the same. Nothing is different. There's no reason to value life, so the value of life can be diminished. That's why we're able to do in our nation and in our world the things that we're able to do. When we as a people lose the sanctity of God, listen, what that does then, because we're now not holding God up and we're not setting him apart as the Lord in our lives, then what that does, that allows us that we can then in turn, we're free to kill babies. We're free to do that, amen? Why? Because there's nothing special about that baby that's any different than anything else that's alive. Because there is no sanctity of God, there is no sanctity of life. When we are able to kill babies because there's no sanctity of God, then we're also able to traffic human beings. Why? Because there, listen, in the people, in people's minds, A human life is no different than cattle, and they herd cattle so they can herd people. Now, we're sitting here going, no, pastor, that's crazy. But folks, listen to me. This is a real issue in our world today. It's getting larger and larger and larger, this idea of human trafficking, because people are nothing. But we can enslave and abuse people, treat them any way we want to. And we can do that. Why? Because there's no sanctity of God. And if we're all the same, then nothing else matters. But not only that, we're free to determine quality of life. We are able in our own mind to determine what is good quality of life. Why? Because life is all, when it gets to where it's not up to what our standards are, then we can decide that it's not good quality and we can now do away with that life or take away life-giving support because that individual is not very productive and that's not a good quality of life. You know, I shared with you some years ago that I used to view old age differently than I do now, amen? When I was in my 20s, I viewed 60 as just way too old. Amen. I mean, here I was. I was, I was in my 20s. Man, I was, I was still playing basketball. I was still doing things. I was still running great times, and I was doing wonderful things. And in my mind, I'm thinking, who in their right mind would want to be 60 years old? Amen. Wow. They can't do anything like I can at 20. All right. Fast forward a lot of years. I'm 57 years old. Folks, can I tell you, 60's looking pretty good. I still want to be around at 60. I think I've got a pretty good quality of life. Yeah, I may not be able to do like I did when I was in my 20s. Praise God, I can do things better than I was in my 20s. Amen? So with that, res- with that rationale, if I in my 20s could not view quality of life to someone in their 60s, But now I can. Why in heaven's name would I want to turn my life over to a group of 20-somethings and let them determine me? Do I have a good quality? No, because I know when they're 20, they don't know a thing. They don't know about good life at 60. They can't picture good. So, of course, if they're sitting in a room and they don't have the sanctity of God, all they want to do is determine what is quality of life, and a 20-year-old doesn't know quality of life at 60, they're going to say that 60-year-old doesn't deserve the medical treatment. Let's save it for someone else. And you say, oh, preacher, we're not ever going to get to that. Folks, we're there now. Can I tell you, we're there now, and it's getting worse. Why? Because we have felt that we 
can have a determination of the quality of life. How can I do that? How can I do that? Because I think I'm doing pretty well at 57. I think I'm, I'm enjoying life, and I have fun, believe it or not. You young people, I know you're going, oh, how can he? It can't be possible. Hang with me for a couple of days. Amen? I think I got a good quality of life, and I love my life, and I want to keep, keep going. But when we have that sanctity of life as an extension of the sanctity of God, that's how we're going to view it. But the thing I want us to understand as I, as I go through this, while sanctity of life is the foundation, love is the motivation. That I will love God because I sanctify him, I set him apart in my heart, and so I love God, and as a result of my loving God, I will then in turn love people. That's what we're studying in the book of, of, of 1 John. On Sunday nights. We've talked about it a lot. We're going to talk about it again even tonight. That if you love God, you're going to love your brother. It's impossible to to not do it. And if you say you love God and you don't love your brother, then the Bible, 1 John flat out tells us you're lying. So our sanctity of life is the foundation, but love is the motivation. In the book of Matthew, chapter 27, verses 37 through 39, Jesus says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first great commandment. And the second is like it. In other words, he says, the second is, goes along with it. The second is, you can't have it without the other, and if you have the other, you, you, you got to have this one. He says that this is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The more you love God, the more you set him apart and sanctify him in your life, the more you're going to love your neighbor, the more you're going to love life, the more you're going to understand the sanctity of life, whether it's born or unborn, whether it's young or it's old, whether it's got the quality of life that you think is good or whether it's got the quality of life that you think is poor, it's still you're going to love, love, love life. Because you're going to love others. You're going to take care of them and protect them. The thing that I want you to understand with the sanctity of life being the foundation and love is the motivation is this idea of internal self-love is a powerful motivation. Amen? This idea of self-love. Because this one's hard to overcome. Because when I have this idea that it's self-love, then what happens is I become my favorite person. Amen? I've told you once before that when I get selfish, I've got three favorite people in my life. And they are me, myself, and I. Everything revolves around those three people. And this idea of self-love. Now listen, I'm not sitting here saying we ought to hate ourselves. But my friends, the Bible says we ought to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Then we are to love others as ourselves. In other words, we ought to not that we love ourselves less, it's just that we love ourselves less than what we should, that we love others more than us. But when it becomes that I become my favorite person and I do the things that I want, I can say what I want. Why? Because we begin to set our own standards. It's all about me. I set the goals, I set the standards of what life is, I set the standard of what, how quality of life is, I set the standard of how people are to be treated and how they're to be thought about. In other words, my judgment is all that matters. Why? Because it's about me, my favorite person. And so your standards and your judgments don't matter to me because it's all about me what I want. But now here's the problem, is that if I do that, and everyone here in this room does that, and all you at home watching this on the live stream, you do it, guess what we have? We have chaos. 
Because everybody is doing right according to their own eyes, their own self. So it's your motivations, it's your standards, and it's your judgments. And you get to be the one to choose. But we can't live that way. So we begin to set our own standards. And I, because of that, I do what I think is right so I can say to you what I want to say. Toughen up if you're not happy with it. Because that's how I feel. I get to do to you what I want. And if you're not happy, you don't like it, well, toughen up. Get a spine. Because it's all about me. It's what I want. I get, so I can say what I want. I can do what I want. And I can treat people the way I want to treat them. Why? Because it's about me. And you need to just toughen up. Now listen. I have Christians who claim this, that we, have a, we, we can say things, whatever we want. People ought to just accept it. My friends, listen to me. That's not scriptural. Jesus said, let all communications out of your mouth be what? Encouraging and uplifting. So I can't say to you whatever I want. I can't do to you whatever I want and expect you to just toughen up. No, not if I set apart Christ as Lord in my heart and I love him, which means I'm going to love you, which means the things that I want to say to you, things I want to say about you, the things I want to do for you are going to be for you and not me because I love you as I love myself. So this is the idea of love being the the motivation Because what happens is it becomes all about me and my fulfillment. It's what makes me happy. It's what makes me feel good about me. No one else matters unless they are about me as well. This is the idea of the sanctity of life. The motivation. And the Bible tells us the last thing I want to look at today, the last thing I want to look at is the idea of love, the love of Christ should compel us. The love of Christ should compel us. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 5, 14, for the love of Christ compels because we judge thus that if one died for all, then one died, then all died. So what we've got to understand is this. We're all in the same boat. Christ died for us. And so our motivating factor ought to be love. Not to prove me right, not to prove you wrong, not to elevate myself above anyone else because we're all the same. Listen to me, God is not a respecter of people. What that means is he's created us all the same, we're all just alike, And we ought to all be treated the same way. He does not view one better than the other. He does not view any of us more important. I don't care where you're from. I don't care what part of the nation or what part of the world. I don't care what color your skin is. I don't care your socioeconomic status. It doesn't matter. We're all the same. And when we have the sanctity of God in our heart, we're going to view it that way. That's why the church should be this place where people come from all around the world and we have different backgrounds and different ideas and different philosophies, but we come together under the Holy Spirit of God working together because we all view each other the same. We're all special in the sight of God. But we are living in a time where life doesn't matter that much. And we feel like we can say and do and treat and and determine ourselves what is good and what is right, what is, is, is of good value. But my friends, that's not true. That's not from the Word of God. That's not. Because the Word of God teaches us that we are to love God with all we are. And the second is an extension of that. We are to love each other. Especially in the brotherhood. We are family, amen? And we ought to be viewing each other that way. What hurts you hurts me. 
what elates you should, should thrill me. And I should view you as I view for myself even better. But it is an extension that when we get back to this, the idea in verse 27 that God created man in his image. That's why we're special. And in the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. So when we view life, what we're going to do is, and I'm going to close right here, we're going to view life as God views it. He created us, and he created us two different beings, male and female. All right? Male and female. And I want you to understand something. I'm, I'm, I'm going to not get off on this tangent, but I could. God didn't get, get you and develop you and then say halfway about two or three years of age, go, oh, wow, I messed up on that one. No, he didn't. He made you male or female. Not both. Not confused. And we will see that. We will understand that. That will make sense to us when we understand we were made in God's image. And we were made special above anything else. The sanctity of life extends from our philosophy of the, of the sanctity of God. So who is God to you? Who is God to you? If he is Jehovah, the creator, the provider. If he is the one who sent Jesus to die on the cross for you, then you will view life as he views it. But you will also view eternity as he views it. So if you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, I want to encourage you to call upon the name of the Lord today and be saved. He will change your view of life. He will do it. You won't have to. I think so many times in the church we try to change people's behavior when we can't do that. We ought to let God do that. His Holy Spirit will change us. So let him change you today. Maybe you're here, maybe you're watching, and you say, well, I know that I'm saved, but, man, I, I know that I've become selfish, and it's been, been all about me. And I've even been buying on into the view of the philosophies of this world, that life really hasn't been that special. I've been treating life, I've, I've not been thinking about how I deal with people, what I say to them, how I defend them, how I hold them up, but today I want to do that. God, I want you to renew in me that spirit. Would you do that today? I'm going to ask the praise team to come back up. Men, they're going to sing another song that's going to just cause you to want to sing along with them. So you at home, join in with us. You here, join in with us. And it's what I believe. What I believe actually affects what I do. You can say you do this, but you believe this, then folks, they got to gel together. I believe. So what do you truly believe today? If you need Jesus, would you, would you come forward? We'll pray with you. You at home, call our church office. We'll be glad to visit with you. But make yourself to Christ. Make yourself to Christ. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you and we thank you for this great opportunity to have been together today. And I pray, Father, as we step into the last part of our service, that, Lord, you would just uh, work. work your spirit, Lord. Work in our hearts. And bring this to where you want it to be, in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand with me? You at home, join us.